Breaking news is the Minnesota Wild have traded defenseman Kalen Addison. Where did he go? What does it mean? What's coming up? We tackle all those questions and more on today's episode of Locked on Wild. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, this is Brandon Duham, and this is Locked On Wild. What is happening, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms if you have not already so you don't miss out on any of our new episodes throughout the course of the week. On today's episode, we break down the Kalen Addison trade that uh, kind of came out of nowhere unless you have been paying attention over the uh, last year plus. We'll talk about what it means for the decor going forward, what it means for Dakota Mermis, and what it means or the possibility of another move being on the horizon as well. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider. And as you heard, Kalen Addison on his way to San Jose for a 2026 fifth round selection. And uh, also right wing prospect Adam Raska. Um, just looking at uh, some of the numbers, Addison had uh, 38 points, five goals, 33 assists in 92 games with Minnesota. Raska, who is 22, has skated in seven games with the San Jose Barracuda of the American Hockey League this season. He made his NHL debut on January 11th, 2022 against Detroit and has skated in eight NHL games with the Sharks. The 5'10", 185-pound uh, native of uh, Chechia has skated in 110 career AHL games and owns 25 points in 182 penalty minutes over three seasons with San Jose. Raska appeared in 57 games with uh, the QMJHL, where he recorded 46 points, 67 penalty minutes, and a plus 14 rating over a span of two seasons from 2019 to 2021. Whether or not Raska factors into this really at all, although uh, shout out to uh, JD from Locked on Sharks, who um, sent me a message as I was getting ready to record today's episode that Raska is a pest. And so he is the perfect minor league player for the Minnesota Wild. So why did Kalen Addison get traded? Well, I think there are a few things that have led to the uh, decision to make this move. If you remember last year, Kalen Addison came on the scene as uh, a third pairing defenseman, had a ton of points, helped that power play get off to a really, really good start. But there wasn't much that was going right on the defensive side of the ice. And Addison was on the ice for a ton of goals against. His plus minus was, was not great, and it led to him being a mostly healthy scratch down the stretch last season after the Wild acquired John Klingberg to step in and run the uh, top power play. Now, that had mixed results. And so a situation as well where uh, in the offseason, the Minnesota Wild wanted to see a little bit more defensive commitment from Addison. Um, they, they challenged him. They challenged Marco Rossi. Uh, they challenged all their young players to, uh, to put in the work and to come in this season and just uh, light it up. And what have we seen so far this year? We've seen Marco Rossi. He put in the time in the offseason. He has been just a force for the Minnesota Wild so far this season, and he looks like a player that belongs at the NHL level. I'm not suggesting that Kalen Addison didn't put the time in, but... I mean, look at look at what we've seen so far. Rossi's been everywhere. Addison has been kind of a guy so far this season. And I know not all of the blame is his for the issues that this third pairing had in the early part of the season. 
whether it be him, John Merrill, or Alex Goligoski. That trio was responsible for a ton of goals uh, down the stretch last year and responsible for a ton of goals this season as well. And so I think the Wild got to the point where there just didn't seem to be um, enough that they were seeing from Kalen Addison on a nightly basis. And he has played better this season. So I think it's safe to say that uh, those issues for that third pairing were a, maybe a little more John Merrill's fault than they were Kalen Addison. But look at what we've seen from Dakota Mermis and Damon Hunt since they have stepped into the lineup. Mermis has just seamlessly transitioned to being an NHL defenseman. And I think it's, we, we talked about the the notion of being comfortable, being okay with what you're seeing. And I think we are just seeing the Minnesota Wild right now are more comfortable with Dakota Mermis being part of this mix long-term um, than they are of him just being a guy that is up here uh, to fill in and you just continue to run your head into the wall with that third pairing combination. I think we're seeing the Wild have said enough is enough with that third pairing, and the defense, since Mermis has been inserted in, has looked better. The offense certainly pushing the pace has helped take pressure off of that decor, but I don't, I, I don't think you can just chalk it up to circumstance that Dakota Mermis has come in and he has looked better defensively than Addison has. Now, I know the big trade-off that you are losing by trading a guy in Kalen Addison, that he is a young defenseman, he's under team control, he is a good driver of offense, and he is one of probably your best options at quarterbacking the top power play unit. But he's not really doing what you need him to do defensively. And so it just came time that they hit the wild. I think it's seen all they needed to, to know that they're probably better off just trying for one of their other defensive prospects to win one of those roles on that third pairing and maybe elevate higher in the lineup. It's, it's a lineup that is pretty crowded as it is. And I think this also gives us a, a good glimpse as to the availability of Jared Spurgeon being essentially imminent. So at this point, the Wild are more comfortable with what they see from Dakota Mermis and Damon Hunt um, to make a move to pull Addison off the roster, which, again, by process of elimination, likely means that he was going to be the odd man out when Spurgeon returned. So... The Wilds getting a fifth round pick. I I just kind of right off the bat thought that a fifth rounder in return maybe seems a little low, but you throw in a prospect as well. It's I, I'm always going to lean on the side of not jumping ship on a prospect a little too early, but again, just look at compared to Marco Rossi. Look at the strides that Rossi's made this year. There's no doubt he's an NHL guy. Addison has just kind of blended in um, and kind of gotten lost in the shuffle. It would be different if he was really making eye-opening plays on a nightly basis. But point, point to one, point to one that you've seen so far this year that doesn't involve being on the ice for a goal against. And I know, I know I'm simplifying things probably a little too much, but that's that's kind of what it comes down to for me is – are you seeing signs that somebody is starting to put the whole thing together? And I just don't think we've seen that. And so what does it mean for the Wilds defensively on special teams? Uh, we'll talk about all that as we continue the show here today. But again, the big news of the day, the Minnesota Wilds have traded Kalen Addison to the San Jose Sharks in exchange for a 2026 fifth round draft pick. We'll talk about all that and more. Plus, does this mean the Wild have another move on the way? All that is coming up on today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. 
Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. And for somebody who is not a car person like me, when that check engine light pops on, I have no idea what I need to do. eBay Motors has over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. I can't imagine ordering a part for a car on the internet and getting it and having it not work. eBay Guaranteed Fit takes that worry right out of my head. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home the win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. Today's episode of Locked on Wild also brought to you by Sleeper. A new NHL season brings all sorts of possibilities, whether it's Marco Rossi scoring a hat trick, Kirill Kaprizov getting to 50 goals, or, dare I say, the Minnesota Wild hoisting the Stanley Cup someday. You could win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Lockdown NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports, and especially daily fantasy hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests all you have to do is pick whether elite players like mcdavid ovechkin crosby mckinnon kaprizov boldy will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals assists saves plus minus and more in a given game it's so easy to all it takes is less than a minute to line up your lineup and win use promo code locked on nhl and you'll get up to a 100 match on your first deposit Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Welcome back to today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For the everydayers, you can join us tomorrow as we talk with John Chick of Locked on Rangers for the rematch between the Wild and the Rangers in New York tomorrow night. You can uh, tune in for that. And if there is inevitably some other move made by the Minnesota Wild uh, here today, we'll have another episode to uh, break down that as well. Uh, let's get back to the discussion. Kalen Addison traded to the San Jose Sharks. So what does this mean for the two units in which he had the biggest impact? Defense and special teams. Let's start with the defense. And I think we have already seen, again, that the Minnesota Wilds have been very pleased with what we've seen from Dakota Mermis to the point that it hasn't been announced yet. But I think he's here to stay, at least for this season. I, honestly, just the number of plays that he seems to make that kind of get lost in the shuffle, um, but are solid defensively. He, I, I go back to the one in which it was... Um, I think it was against the Rangers at XL Energy Center. There was a Rangers player behind the Rangers net, and uh, he was waiting for Mermis to leave so that he could pass it up the ice either to the right or to the left. Mermis stuck with him and ended up forcing a turnover off of the pass and getting a shot on net. And, you know, it's it's things like that. It's the goals that he's been able to provide early on this season. And it's just the fact that, I think we see somebody that is just not going to take insane risks, is not going to try to overcompensate for what he's capable of doing, and just is a stay-at-home defenseman. And so for a pairing that's that third pairing at times has been absolutely carved this season, I think the fact that we've started to see the defensive numbers improve with Mermis in the lineup warrants giving him more opportunities to continue to play at the NHL level. And so props to Dean Evason and props to Bill Guerin for getting to the point where they realized, hey, 
our third pairing is not sustainable at this current moment. The combination of John Merrill or Alex Goligoski and Kalen Addison just isn't working. We need to go at this a different way. And it remains to be seen if we are going to get um, another move that um, comes out of this. And so we'll uh, we'll see what the Wild end up doing uh, to uh, try to supplant that uh, third pairing. You know, if it ends up being that Damon Hunt is your seventh defenseman, I'd be fine with that too. I know he's a young player and you're you're taking a risk with those guys because there's a chance that they make mistakes. But I, I don't think we can afford to just let that be a reason to not have players in the lineups. This team makes plenty of mistakes as it is. It's just that we're seeing them happen from rookies who are then learning from those mistakes. And Mervis isn't a rookie. He's been around uh, he's been around professional hockey for a while. Uh, he's been with the Iowa Wild for a while. He has leadership characteristics. It's no coincidence that the Iowa Wild named him their captain. So I think that's another side to this as well, is that he brings some good leadership characteristics to this team that uh, they maybe haven't been getting from some of those other guys. So defensively, I think what this means is that we're going to see uh, Dakota Mermis continue to get opportunities um, when Jared Spurgeon returns. I mean, I, I think you you pop him in to that uh, top combination with Jake Middleton, then you've got Brodeen and Faber as your second pairing, and then you can go Mermis and Hunt or Mermis, and if the Wild do end up adding some more defensemen or another defenseman, um, you put them in that third pairing, and all of a sudden you've started to uh, you started to really stabilize that uh, that decor that was so shaky early on. The other big one that will. Uh, certainly lead to some questions as to how this is going to play out as the power play. But let's be honest here as well. The power play has not been super productive this year. They've got five power play goals on the season in uh, 12 games. And I think the Wilds are comfortable at least seeing if this five forward lineup works. I don't think it's going to be something that they stick with. But at least at this point, they're comfortable seeing if it's something that works for the Wild to just try to get them some level of success. Um, obviously, Addison with his vision is something that you would want on the uh, top power play as opposed to guys like Alex Goligoski or, or even Jared Spurgeon. But if it's not working, you can't continue to stick with it which is why we've seen changes. We've seen them go to the five forward unit. We saw Matt Boldy dumped off the top power play uh, against the Islanders with Matt Zuccarello hopping back up to just try to jog things. This team is in a situation right now where they're just trying to figure out what is going to end up being the most successful combination for that grouping. And I don't think it's something that we'll see here this year. But I'm just going to throw a take out there into the uh, into the stratosphere. Do not be surprised with what we've seen from Brock Faber offensively this year. If at some point, be it next year, be it the year after, do not be surprised if we see Brock Faber get some opportunities to uh, try to quarterback that unit as well. His vision, I think, is better than we give him credit for, and he is perfectly capable of driving play offensively himself and so don't be surprised if he gets an opportunity to uh, try to fill that spot um so it's a work in progress on the power play department but it's a situation where i think if that unit is successful and if kaylin addison has locked down that position as your top power play quarterback then this isn't a move that's made but he just he never really again Signature moments, moments where you say, okay, we're starting to see some good things um, stacked up together. Honestly, the the best one I think that we we saw was any moments in which he's on the ice and not giving up goals. And so it's Bill Guerin making a move to try to shake things up and uh, just trying to give this team some different options as we go through the rest of the season. And as we had been asking for giving players an opportunity 
Uh, in the case of Damon Hunt, giving him an opportunity to see what he's got at the NHL level, giving Dakota Mermis, who is a little on the older side, but has been an AHL guy to this point, giving him an opportunity to see what he's able to do. And so we don't have the answers per se to those questions, but I think at this point, it's um, it's just a matter of trying to figure out that right combination and um, being comfortable with Mermis and Hunt, at least on that uh, third pairing. So a lot of moving parts from this. And again, I keep looking at my phone to see if there's going to be another trade made before this episode is done. If not, don't worry, I'll just do another one. Uh, if there's another move made today, we'll just do another one to break it down because uh, that's that's just how Locked and Wild operates. Now, there is an interesting angle to this to discuss. And so we'll talk about the potential for another move to be made for wherever in the lineup uh, to finish today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by FanDuel, official sports book of Locked On. And if you are looking to cash in big, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That is $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is incredibly easy to use. There are a wide range of betting options available. If you took the Minnesota Wild to beat the New York Islanders last night, you cashed in big with your initial bets. And if you took players like Kirill Kaprizov, Jewel Erickson Eck, how about Pat Maroon scoring again with some of your prop bets, your bonus money? You're feeling great about how things uh, went because you hopped in and started FanDuel uh, and are seeing that win immediately. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started today. FanDuel, official partner of Locked On. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Talking about the ripple effects from the Kalen Addison trade. And if there is indeed another move on the way, which Michael Russo suggests that there is, um, where would we like to see that move come from? Well, obviously, because you're losing a defenseman who could drive play offensively, that would kind of lead to uh, one area that could potentially be improved. I mean, the roster itself, the forward groupings, are all starting to play their best of the season. So I don't really necessarily want to disturb the apple cart in that aspect. But if Bill Guerin can find an opportunity for somebody to uh, to hop in on defense, that can help you um, offensively that can help drive the play that can maybe help you on special teams. I think that would be worthwhile for him to take a look at, but let's keep in mind as well. The wilds are operating with limited funds. And so it's not like they can just pull money out of the air because, uh, anybody that comes off of long-term injured reserve, you got to find a way to get that money off the books. And so I think we will see Jared Spurgeon off of long-term injured reserve very soon, first and foremost. But let's keep in mind some of the uh, potential names that could uh, be moved. Um, shout out to Brett Marshall for putting this together. A list of players that do not have any sort of movement clause in their contracts. Kirill Kaprizov, Matt Boldy, Jewel Erickson Eck. Brandon Duhame, Connor Dewar, Vinny Letary, Jake Middleton, and John Merrill. Um, the, the leader in the, the clubhouse, and the one that I think we would throw a parade for if a move is to be made, is John Merrill. Because, again, you know what you have. You know what you have, and it hasn't worked. And so I think the fact that Merrill has been in the press box, I think is an indication that management and the coaching staff have finally seen that. 
So if Bill Guerin is able to find an opportunity, even if he retains salary, even if he retains some portion of the salary to still get, you know, if you retain 200 K on that salary to get Merrill off the roster would be just a massive win um, for the wilds. It would signify then that Damon hunt is your seventh defenseman. And if you bring somebody in, um, that would end up being their spot on the third pairing with Dakota Mermis. We've seen Bill Guerin make hockey trades before. Ian Cole for Greg Pattern a couple of years ago from the Colorado Avalanche literally just gave Greg Pattern away for Ian Cole, who ended up being fantastic for the Wild on that third pairing with Carson Soucy. Uh, Ryan Reeves last year brought in to help restore order and to uh, help with the vibe in the room. Pat Maroon in the offseason. Garen trading a low round draft pick. Tampa Bay retaining 200K on his salary. He comes in and he is in, on a short list of one of the best players for the Wild so far this season. Bill Guerin has moves up his sleeve that we just don't see on the radar that end up paying off big dividends. And so he's certainly capable, even with as close to the cap as this team is, he's certainly capable of pulling something off to, uh, to make um, moves happen. And let's just talk about kind of where this roster is at. So right now you have Vinny Letary, who has played well. He's played well with the Minnesota Wild since he's been called up. You've got Freddie Goudreau, who is currently on, uh, currently on the bench. He's injured, and it sounds like it's going to be a little while before he returns. I don't think Freddie Goudreau is anybody that is going anywhere in particular, but look at where the Wild are at with center depth and with just the general way that the top nine has played over the last two games. uh, Kaprizov, Boldy, Rossi. Freddie G is not going to bump anybody off that line. Hartman, Zuccarello, and Johansson has maybe been your best line so far in the two games that they've been put together. Freddie G is not going to bump anybody off that line. Uh, Jewel Erickson Eck, Pat Maroon, and Marcus Foligno playing every bit as good as those other two lines have been over the last two games. I'm sorry, Dean. I don't think Freddie G is going to bump anybody off of that line. So where do you put Freddie Goudreau when he returns? Well, he's, in my opinion, not as good as a wing as he is as a center. There's only one line left in which... um, you have to you have a spot for him when he returns. And so maybe the easy answer is that you send Letary back down and you have Goudreau with Dewar and Duhame. But if you're looking for any of those guys with um with no trade protections on their contracts and uh whether or not you need to maybe add a little bit of a sweetener to um make things work if you're going to move, say, John Merrill off the roster. Um, I know it seems as though there's some pretty good steam that Brandon Duhame may be the one to move, but, I mean, I I would say he is probably a preferable option on the wing for that line. And so, I don't know, call me crazy. Connor Dewar sweetener to get Merrill off the roster to bring in another defenseman. And then you go with Goudreau and Letary and Duhame on the roster because with Dewar being a restricted free agent in the offseason, are you going to pay him what he's asking for? I'd love to have him. I'm not trying to push anybody except for uh, maybe one particular person. I'm not trying to push anybody off the roster. I mean, all options, I think, at this point are on the table. And so I'm I'm waiting to see what happens with the next move. But the main takeaway from the trade for uh, Kalen Addison to San Jose, the main takeaway is that the Wilds, the coaching staff, Dean, Bill Guerin, they are more comfortable with what they're getting from Dakota Mermis defensively 
than what they were getting with Kalen Addison and having Addison on the roster to be essentially a power play specialist. It, they're just, there isn't room for that type of thing. So that's why this move was made. It's not something that happens just because of what we've seen this year. I mean, look at what we saw last year too. Yes, he was, was good as the power play quarterback, but beyond that has, has really, really not been able to take the strides that we've seen from guys like Marco Rossi. Could this end up biting the Minnesota wild down the down in the next few years? Of course it could. All of these moves have risk involved, but at this point for the wilds, what we, what they were getting on the ice with Kalen Addison was, was not what was needed. So that's why the trade was made. Uh, again, if there's any sort of other move made by the Minnesota Wilds today, uh, we'll have another episode breaking that down for you as well. But uh, otherwise, we'll just see how this all plays out uh, and uh, how it affects the Wilds going into uh, tomorrow's game against the New York Rangers. Make sure you follow along with Lockdown Wild wherever you listen to your podcasts. You can follow us on YouTube as well as on social media. So make sure you don't miss out on any of the coverage of the Minnesota Wild all season long. We've got new episodes for you every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.